Hello everybody, so I wanted to spend some time thinking about creating poster presentations. So essentially what you're going to be doing in this class and other classes is taking a scientific paper and then translating that over into a poster presentation. Now when we think about poster presentations, really what we should be thinking about are um, going to a scientific conference. So there's basically two ways to um, that scientific conferences give out scientific information. You have a lecture where, you know, it's just one person standing up there talking to, you know, 20, 30, couple hundred, couple thousand people, or um, poster presentations where, you know, this is more of a, uh, a very different way of doing things where you have a bunch of posters in, in a room and you stand next to your poster and then pe the people that are interested in coming to hear your presentation will come up to you and talk to you. So think about it like uh, science fair on steroids. So there's, um, you know, this is a really popular way, really common way that we um, give out our scientific information. Um, you really shouldn't, a lot of times in scientific conferences, people think about these as like, the less important, not as, you know, prestigious way to um, give out information. But um, I, I, I think that's um, really doing posters a disservice because there's a lot of really people that really like poster presentations because it's a much more personal interaction with people. Um, and that'll kind of be made clear as we go on through this presentation here. Now, Again, what you're going to do is taking a scientific paper. So here we've got, you know, uh, just a scientific paper I pulled off the web. And we can see that, you know, it's in a very different format. There's paragraphs and, you know, a whole lot of text and a lot of stuff going on there. Um, and you cannot do that in, um, well, you frankly can't do that in a lecture. You can't also do that in, for surely, on a poster presentation. Um, poster presentations are more personal. They're meant to be either one-on-one -on -one or you talking to maybe two or three people at max because that's the num you know, main number of people that can fit around your poster. And you can have a couple minute conversation with them, okay? Um, if the person is really, really interested, you know, they might spend 20, 30 minutes talking to you, and that's great. You can't do that in a lecture scenario. Um, but poster presentations are really this um, kind of interplay between content delivery, summarizing your information, and then having to design a good poster. And that's really tricky to do, balancing all these different things, because, um, you know, really slick designs oftentimes don't have enough content. So we kind of have to be in this um, middle ground at times. So uh, I think the best way to do this is think about, look at some bad posters, okay? So this is what I think about as a bad poster. Um, here, let's get rid of me for a second. Um, Okay, what we've got here is uh, some poster about elder abuse prevalence study and service needs assessment, okay? Um, now that title might mean something to somebody, but um, I don't find it very uh, useful. When I look at this poster, it's really boring. Um, it, uh, it's also unorganized. I don't know where to start. Um, do you start at the top left? Probably, uh, but then do you go from left to right, top to bottom? It's kind of all, um, it's, it's really tricky what to do here. So, um, and then there's just, just way too much text, right? You might as well just staple your paper up onto the board um, instead. Um, the next thing is, is, okay, so we've got another poster presentation here that is a little bit better, but really, um, Again, not that great. Um, here, there's still a ton of text. Um, there's frankly a lot of wasted space here. Um, it's a little better because there's some, you know, interesting figures. Um, but still, this this poster doesn't make me want to read this thing, and it's really hard. I can't get the just. I'd really have to read the whole thing before I can figure out um, what's going on here. 
So um, in academic circles, um, recently there's kind of been this revolution or idea to um, make posters really, really simple. So this guy, Mike Morrison, came up with this idea of, if we look here, what we've got is a poster with this huge title, and this is basically a poster about making posters. So he had this idea to make communicate the findings more quickly. Um, that's basically um, taking a poster, really simplifying it, um, and then, um, but then having some, a little bit of supporting information here on the left. Um, I think this goes a little bit too far. So what I'm going to be presenting to you is a way to do posters that's kind of a middle ground between, um, you know, something like this where we have a ton of text and then something like this that is um, really more design design oriented and really just supposed to be talking to someone as opposed to um, having it be a little bit more standalone. So, so I'll be this kind of middle ground thing. So here we go. Here is my example of a silly little study. Um, you know, not really a study. I just made it up. But it's um, a poster presentation. So look, just look at this for a minute. And I think pretty quickly you can see that it's, um, you can get the gist of it. So there's a descriptive title that tells you something about it. Um, and then there's a couple of ways to really read this. You can start at the top left and go down, or you can um, look at these questions here that are, um, and then go straight from there. Because frankly, if you skip all the introduction and the methods, I'm really fine with that in this case. Um, but I uh, am uh, more thinking that you know people are really interested in these questions and then they can see the results really quickly I have huge graphs here showing the main results of uh, what's what um, is is happening in you know the main results main findings of my paper um, I think one of the most important things that in for poster presentations is that these you know these headings so let's let's go back to this one right so we've got here the introduction the methods the results um, conclusions I, th that's just a waste of space I don't really think that's needed um, I mean one thing I should say is that if you really like having those headings the, th that's fine it's not it's not that much of a waste of space but I really don't think it's needed you can get your points across without having this intro, methods, results, discussion, all that kind of thing. Um, one thing I think that is pretty much for any poster is you really don't need full sentences. Um, you shouldn't go up to it and read a poster. A poster is really not meant to be standalone. You should really think of these you being the presentation. Um, you are giving the presentation. The poster is just an aid so that you can remember what to talk to talk about and how to talk to the person but um, and then you can reference your poster but it's really not meant to be um, like read from start to finish um, you can make it that way but um, I don't really think most posters need to be that so I don't have um, full sentences pretty much anywhere I rarely have punctuation even unless it's needed for you know I have it here on the questions and that's fine but um, unless you, you, you can really kind of um, suit how you use your language to how you're going to give the poster presentation. Um, so, you know, if we look a little bit closer at this presentation, then um, this is really the introduction up here, okay? Um, and I'm talking about, you know, kind of going along our circadian rhythm study. Um, this idea, you know, sleep is important. And, and these bullet points here might be referenced from what you would have in your introduction. Um, and I don't, you, you don't necessarily always need to reference as heavily as you would in a paper, but it might be nice to do that. But what I would do that with is footnotes. So just put like a little one, two, three or something here for your, um, for your references. 
Um, and again, you're going to be um, talking to the person, so um, it doesn't need to be like a completely standalone introduction that you would um, totally get, you know, everything that you would have in your introduction um, in a paper. Um, and then I go on to here, here's the methods, where I'm kind of giving my study population here, and then we're looking at a sleep study. So basically, how much sleep and how does sleep, sleeping affect awesomeness, right? Silly example, but at least it's, um, you know, makes sense here. So then we have our way that we're testing awesomeness of, so, you know, the number of high fives per minute while walking on campus. And we sh can show a picture of a person and then random people have to rate how awesome they are on a one to a 10 scale, okay? Again, silly example, but makes sense for this. Then we go straight into our uh, results section. And that is, in this case, just two graphs. Um, you, you know, we're, we're reminded by the questions here um, in the, the, the big boxes up here on top. And then um, you shouldn't just say, okay, and here's my results. You should be explaining those results. Um, and what we've got here is, you know, a graph showing our data with here of people that were that slept, people that didn't sleep, and how awesome they are. And we did a t-test here, and it has all the information. It has it says we're doing a t-test, our degrees of freedom, our t-value, and our p-value. So it has all the information that we would have in a results section, but just in graphical format and um, only graphical format in this case. And again, that might not be um, sufficient for your data set. It's kind of um, up to you if you want to have some more text. And certainly, um, you know, text boxes are fine here. Um, I think it's just important to remember you don't need to be writing in complete sentences and taking up a bunch of space in having a whole paragraph going on here. And then what we have here is a corresponding um, discussion box. Um, and I don't label that as such, but it's very easy, easy to see that this box goes along with the, um, you know, the, this question, how does whether you sleep or not affecting awesomeness? Because, um, you know, it's the same color. And um, this color coding, I think, is um, makes the poster at times look potentially a little weird. But I think um, it's it, it works really well. So you can really follow the thought of, you know, from start to finish, from the question to the answer, to the implications of that answer. Um, and then, you know, this is another way we're looking at it for over here. We were looking at how much time a person slept and how awesome they were. Now, um, and we did a correlation here. We're still having our, um, our statistics, our R value and our P value here. Um, and then we can look at, you know, this is that main point, sleeping more makes you more awesome. But, you know, this is a discussion section, so we could point out some issues that we have with our data. Um, so I'm saying that, you know, really what is the thing? Do, are you more awesome because you slept more, or is it just that more awesome people sleep more? Um, and then we could, you know, some biological answers. Maybe it's really energy expensive to be awesome, so you have to sleep more. Okay, but when we think about, you know, going back then to your scientific paper, I think it's um, important to think that this poster basically has all of, all of those sections. It has the introduction, it has the methods, um, but it's really, it's really you giving that, um, that information to your audience, which is fewer people, so you can very easily tell when someone is not understanding it, and that's where you can then fill in what they need there. Um, I should also mention then that, um, you know, the, the acknowledgments and the references. The references are really, really important for a, um, a scientific paper, but it's not super important in the, um, on a poster. Um, 
if someone is super, super interested in your stuff and wants to read all about your acknowledgments and everybody that was involved and look at all the references you can that you used, that's great. Um, have them on there. Um, it, it's just, they can be really, really tiny. Like when I make a poster, I have my references be in like size six font. So super tiny that you have to get, you know, just a couple inches um, away from and um, to be able to read. And that's fine because um, most people are not going to be like in a, in a uh, poster presentation super keyed in on on, on at least those two parts of the um, the poster. So um, this again, this is just an idea um, should help you a little bit making um, making some posters um, and um, I, I want to say again there is different ways to make a poster. So if you like this idea, great, go for it. Um, but it's not by, by any means the, the absolute best way to make a poster. It's just what I think is um, a, a good way to do it. So um, I will put a, a PDF copy of this poster um, on the learning management um, software so you can all find that and um, be able to look at it a little bit more closely if you want.